The movie begins as droplets of blood drip down the walls to the floor. A conversation between a mysterious man and a woman about a patient who needs to be put up for a lobotomy can be heard in the background. In a room, the man whom they pertain to keeps banging his head on the wall. With a quick shift, the scene changes to the man being dragged away as the same voices can be heard frantically looking for him. The voices appear to be coming from a doctor and a nurse responsible for the man. The mysterious individual dragging the man stops and leaves. The man is then left alone in an unknown area, with only water by his side. When he regains consciousness, he immediately goes for the water to quench his thirst. The scene changes into a lake. The man emerges from the waters and climbs aboard the small boat, looking distressed, for he doesn't know where he is. Hand in hand, two lovely sisters named Mura and Aya run through a field. When they get into the middle of a forest, Aya tells Mura to shut her eyes, and that she will be thankful afterward. Mura complies. However, Aya runs straight ahead, leaving her sister alone in the forest. A few seconds later, Mura suddenly feels uncomfortable and starts counting down from five before opening her eyes. Just then, a big Siberian husky comes out and calmly approaches her. Aya soon emerges from the back of the trees, telling her that the dog it was Fairy, their childhood pet, and they get to meet again somehow. Fairy now lives in the woods, and Aya tells Mura they can visit her again later on. After school, Aya walks on the way back home with her friends. One of their friends will be having a farewell party before leaving the town, and has invited everyone to come, but Aya needs to stay at home because her mother Maria is not feeling well. For several days, her mother has not gone out, and also refuses to eat, not to mention that even her sister, Mura, stops talking to her. Aya is put under pressure for having no idea how to explain why this is happening to their mother, and the worst part of this is that they have to accept they will be left alone in the future. Though she's still alive, Aya has learned to accept that she will be gone soon. Having known that she has little time left, Maria leaves the care of her daughters to Father Herman, who is a close friend of the family. He assures her that he will look after them, before telling her to sleep to regain her energy. Father Herman gently opens the door to leave, and the sisters are outside, waiting to know how their mother's doing. Unfortunately, Maria is not getting any better. Maria feels like no one can save her mother, doctors, or even God himself. Her frustration and despair just show how much she truly loves her mother. Aya tries her best to comfort her, but her face is painted with hopelessness and too much worry. Later that night, Mura dreams about her mother asleep, but trapped under a sheet of ice in an icy plane. Suddenly, Maria opens her eyes with a gaping mouth, jolting Mura back to consciousness. Mura wakes up from her dream, only to find out that their mother has passed away. That day, they realize they are completely left alone, which greatly scares Mura. After they have fully said goodbye to their mother, they plan to leave their home. Aya feels like there is no reason for them to stay there. And what's worse is everybody getting sick these days, an unknown disease is plaguing their town. However, Mura does not want to leave. She believes that they should stay in their town and help the sick. Aya vows to convince her sister, and remind her that their mother would have done everything to protect them, leaving the town is the least they can do to honor their mother's will. The next day, they attend a mass with Father Herman. While he is discussing the word of God, Mura suddenly feels weak, and starts to slowly lose consciousness. She is dozing off, and her lips are pale as if she's sick. After the mass, Aya notices that Mura looks sick, and immediately asks if she's okay. Mura, with a bowed head, says that she only needs sleep to be better. When they go back to their house, Mura's condition is getting worse and worse and she has no idea how to help and save her. Aya starts to feel like the world is against them. She prays to God to protect her sister from any harm that they may encounter. For a couple of days, Mura sleeps a lot but refuses to eat the same way their mother behaved before. Aya insists that she needs to be hospitalized to get proper help, but the doctor advises that Mura stays in their house. The hospital is crowded due to the outbreak of the disease. Mura starts dreaming again. In her dream, she's walking in a forest as it slowly burns. There is smoke and burning leaves everywhere. She can see Aya in the distance staring at her, but there is something unusual. There is blood flowing from her mouth. Suddenly, a creature emerges from one of the trees and crawls toward Aya. Mura starts running to save her. However, her efforts prove fruitless when the creature takes a pair of teeth from Aya's mouth. Just then, Mura wakes up gasping for breath as she calls for Aya. Aya quickly approaches her. Mura wants to ask Father Herman and tells her to fetch him. Father Herman enters the house and Aya stays outside. To Aya's relief, Mura starts listening to Father Herman. For the first time, Mura wants to speak with him, but Aya feels like her sister is growing apart from her and she thinks that Mura is doing it on purpose. When she sits on the stairs, she finds a sealed envelope and starts reading what's inside. Just then, Father Herman appears and tells her to comfort Mura, for she is very scared. Mura is now struggling with a high fever. As the clock ticks, a mysterious man knocks at the door and tells Aya that she must leave the house immediately, as per the letter from earlier orders. Infected and healthy people need to be separated to prevent the spreading of the virus. The healthy ones are told to stay in the hospital, while the sick stay at home. The man forcibly holds her, insisting that she leave immediately, while the others start locking the door from the outside with a wood panel. Instead of going to the hospital, Aya seeks help from Father Herman. Aya still remembers that Father Herman promised their mother to take care of them, no matter what happens. However, he has no idea how to help them in this situation, there is a rule in place. Aya then goes back to get Mura. 
It will be safer for both of them. After getting Mura ready, Aya supports her as they slowly walk toward Father Herman's house. Aya promises to leave for their aunt's house once Mura has gotten better. Aya insists on going to the next village to find her medicine, but Father Herman tells her that it won't help and that Mura needs her. Father Herman believes that God will tell them what they need to do. However, Mura has been like that for five days already. When Mura asks Aya to read something for her, Aya finds a strange book behind the religious books and proceeds to read it. Later that day, Father Herman walks inside the church to pray. He is filled with many doubts, and he doesn't know what to do anymore. Something has been bothering him, a secret that nobody has to know to protect everyone. But at the same time, he also wants to help Aya. He treats the girls like his own sisters. He pleads with God to help him choose the right decision. As he walks out of the church, he sees Mura in his peripheral vision, sitting beside the church. But when he turns around to take a good look, she's not there anymore. To clear his mind, he sits on the shore of a lake. It's dark. Gloomy ambience is peaceful and provides a sense of calm. All of a sudden, he sees Mura gradually walking toward the deeper part of the lake. He is taken aback at first. But when he realizes what's going on, the adrenaline suddenly kicks in, and he immediately comes to her aid. When he lays her down on the shore, he realizes that it was not Mura, but another person. The mysterious woman, who appears to be blind, then tells him to save the others who really need it instead, before walking away with a cane. Meanwhile, Aya goes out to find Father Herman. With her is the strange book she found earlier. Though she did not ask for permission to take it, she feels like it is a sign of fate, not just for her sister, but also for everybody who needs a cure. Aya clings to the promise of the book, that it can cure any kind of disease. This means that her sister can be helped too, if this is true. Aya then finds Father Herman and asks for permission to read the book. Though he says that she can read it, she is not allowed to do it outside. Father Herman assures her he will tell her everything once they get home. The book opposes the beliefs and morals of the church, the very reason why Father Herman wants to discuss it privately. But, he can assure her that the book is still about God. Aya promises no one will know. The book talks about a magic ritual called Kamlani, that can open a door to the subconscious mind of a person. Behind that door is another world that is linked with the real world. The ritual will help them enter the terminally ill people's minds, like Murrah's, to help them overcome their fear and renew their faith. However, it's not easy, more so, dangerous. Aya begs him to help her sister. Father Herman reluctantly agrees. But only a close person or a relative can enter Mura's mind, and that is Aya, who is prepared to undergo this frightening ritual and delve into the darkest parts of Mura's subconscious mind, if it's the only way to help her. Aya needs to change Mura's beliefs, including the one of being ill. Though Father Herman cannot go, he knows a way to help Aya connect with Mura. To establish the connection, Aya needs to remember every detail about Mura, from the moments of her happiness, down to her troubles and fears. She needs to fully understand Mura's world and believe in it. They begin preparing for the ritual. Aya needs to have a lot of energy to conquer Mura's world, which is believed to be plagued by pain and nightmares, since it's been days. To begin, Aya then starts cutting her sister's hair before shaving it completely off. Unconscious, Mura is taken to a bed. A few seconds later, Father Herman carefully does the same to Aya's hair. As the sun sets, Aya is now sitting across the unconscious Mura. Father Herman then surrounds them with some white powder before putting something on the back of Mura's head. He then pours a liquid into a small wine glass and has Aya drink it. After warning Aya that the process will be painful, he draws a triangle symbol on her head and then traces it with a quill. He tells her to shut her eyes, and then slams his hand on the symbol, rendering Aya unconscious and causing Mura's head to jolt upward. Aya then finds herself in a dark and quiet place that looks like a house. The eerie feeling starts to set in when she suddenly hears someone scream as she ventures deeper. The scream is so loud that she ends up covering her ears. All of a sudden, it stops. Aya then enters a weird room, dimly lit with a reddish light. There, she sees someone who has been covered by a blanket while being tied up in a bed. She slowly lifts the blanket and is horrified to see Mura, whose face looks like she already suffered. Mura urges her to leave before someone comes. When asked who she is pertaining to, Mura tells Aya to remove her blanket. Aya's eyes meet the gruesome sight of Mura's stomach being eaten from the inside by their own mother, Maria. Fear and shock envelop Aya. She cannot understand how their mother would do that to her own daughter. Mura explains that she is to blame for their mother's passing, as she did nothing to help her. Though she tries to convince Mura that it was not her fault, Aya is willing to share the pain. Just then, they hear a thud coming from the door, followed by urgent knocking. Mura tells Aya that she needs to open the door. Walking slowly with fear, Aya eventually reaches the door as the pounding gets intense. Her breath gets caught in her throat as she opens the door, anticipating the malevolent force threatening her sister. Instead of getting face to face with the creature behind the door, Aya finds herself outside a small hut in the middle of a beautiful field of greenery. She takes a moment to admire the scenery before coming back inside. Mura is now gone. The only thing left is a necklace lying on the floor. After picking it up, she then goes outside to venture further. As she inspects the amulet, a light sweeps out and Aya wakes up to reality. The ritual worked. She saw what was inside Mura's mind, including the amulet that she believes is guiding her back. After tucking Mura to bed, Aya proceeds to read the book again. 
The symbols inside are a thousand years old already. The book also includes Father Herman's past. Long ago, when he started to serve God, Father Herman devoted himself wholly to his faith and people. Though he was fond of everyone, the closest to him was a little boy, who was orphaned. Father Herman tried his best to act like a good father to him. At a very young age the boy developed an interest in spiritual ideas, and Father Herman was sure he had found somebody to follow his path. Unfortunately, the boy became seriously ill. For the past few days, he became weaker and weaker. His body became sickly and dull. In the next several weeks, Father Herman made sure to stay by the boy's side, until one day, he had to face the boy's untimely passing. For the first time, he doubted his faith, and he even asked himself if God was listening to him. The grief and sorrow remained with him for a very long time until now, the reason why he wanted to help Murrah. The night after the boy's funeral, when Father Herman returned home, an old mysterious man appeared. He had recently visited him, just before his passing. Father Herman had heard his confession and given him the Holy Communion, so he was intrigued about how he was still alive. After the old man explained everything to him, Father Herman set out to the mountains to search for healing powers to help the ones in need. The local shaman told him not to lose faith, and introduced to him the secrets of an ancient magic practice, Kamlani. Later on, Aya sees the doctor approaching the house. She immediately tells Father Herman that it is the doctor who tried to separate them before. Anxiously, Aya begs him not to open the door, no matter what happens. Later that day, Father Herman tells Aya she has to face the things she's afraid of, instead of running away from them. She then slowly dozes off as the scene changes. Aya ends up in a rundown wooden mill inside Mura's mind again. As she continues to venture into the mill, she comes upon a weird and mysterious person whose neck is tied up to a pillar and whose body is covered from head to ankle with a sack. The sight causes a sudden flash of causing her to shut her eyes as her initial reaction. When she opens them, she sees Mura bleeding and crying on the floor. Mura asks Aya if she remembers their mill, the place where their stepfather would bring Mura to It was the same man who is now suspended by the neck on the ceiling. Aya and their mother both had no idea what was happening to Mura back then. Mura was also threatened to be hanged the same way if she told anyone. Mura then leads Aya outside, where dozens of women who were buried halfway to the ground. They all recite the same phrase, that they all wanted what happened to them. Mura slumps on the ground as she repeats that she didn't want any of it. Aya then embraces Mura, assuring her that she doesn't have to blame herself. Their stepfather is long gone, and has suffered enough at the hands of God. Mura faces Aya as she holds her hand and puts it in front of her eyes. Aya returns to reality, and instantly realizes that Mura is gone. Anxiety kicks in. Until Father Herman tells her that he put Mura on the floor. Though she's safe, she's still in danger, and she will stay that way unless Mura figures out the main reason for her illness. Determined to save her sister, Aya insists they try again. However, every time she does it, it gets harder for her to come back. Gasping for breath, she says that she still has enough energy. Despite Father Herman's advice to take some time for her to recover, Aya refuses to listen. This leaves Father Herman no choice but to allow her. To stop Mura's disease, Aya must find her deepest fear and exterminate it. Only then she can survive. Otherwise, it will cost her life. The scene then takes Aya back to Mura's mind. She finds herself in front of the house they lived in for years. She carefully examines the surroundings. Moments later, her eyes meet her sister playing the piano across from her. Aya rushes to hug Mura, but she disappears into thin air, only to reappear behind her. Mura comments about how they are the only ones there, and assures Aya that she doesn't need to be afraid, she's safe there. That's when Aya realizes that Mura's greatest fear is losing her, which is confirmed when she asks Mura. Aya remembers what was written in the book. Putting an end to her life is the only way to save Mura. She rushes inside the house to find the knife she has always hidden, but to her surprise, the knife is missing. It seems like Mura knows where she hid it. As she looks at herself in the mirror, Mura suddenly appears behind her. In a state of desperation, Aya breaks the mirror, and the shards fall onto the floor. She plans to and uses one of the shards as a knife. She will do everything in her power to save her sister. Aya cuts without any hesitation, causing her to bleed tremendously. Her surroundings start to get muted until she loses consciousness. She then finds herself inside Father Herman's house, and immediately rushes toward Mura. Aya starts to feel anxious when she cannot find Father Herman inside the room. When she attempts to leave the room to find him, she finds herself walking toward another dimension. Turns out she did not return to reality. In a blink of an eye, the scene changes. She's now on top of a rocky mountain, full of determination to finally put an end to Mura's suffering. Aya braves the rocky terrain. After covering a hefty distance, she stumbles upon the same mirror inside her room. She lifts the mirror and finds Mura staring at her better than mother. All of a sudden, Mura turns her head, causing the mirror to fall from Aya's hand in shock. In a snap, she is taken to another dimension. This time, in a cave. Trembling in fear, she carefully walks deeper into the cave. All of a sudden, an unexpected voice calls her name. It's Father Herman, who comments about how Aya must be caught up with thinking if he is real or a part of her imagination. Aya is at a loss for words but eventually asks where Mura is. He then tells her that Aya is still in his house, before praising her for her act of selflessness and sacrifice. Just then, Father Herman transforms into a horrifying creature, the same monster from Mura's nightmare. 
terrified of what Father Herman says. Aya closes her eyes and begs him to stop. However, when she opens them, she sees the monster staring back at her. When she tries to escape, an unidentified man walks down to the cave. Father Herman explains that his gift is God's will. The truth is that God created their world in his subconscious, allowing the chosen ones to create their own worlds. Totally amazed by Aya's determination, he decides to keep her in his world as a pair to the man. He gestures to the man to welcome Aya as Eve, and the man as Adam. In the real world, Aya struggles, her eyes twitching, her body shaking. Just then, Murrow regains consciousness, panting as if she just learned the ability to breathe. She anxiously examines the room before walking towards the altar and wiping the blood off her nose. Though weak, Mura finds the strength to walk into the other room, where she finds Father Herman sitting above Aya and the man who was missing from the hospital at the beginning of the movie. Turns out he was the man inside the subconscious world, and Father Herman was the monster. It was his plan all along to take Aya and the man to his world, as his children. Mura dashes out of the house and desperately knocks on one of the houses, asking for help from the doctor. Mura explains that she saw them lying in the basement, all unconscious. The doctor enters the basement to check, and to his surprise, Father Herman is not there anymore. But the two unconscious bodies, including Aya's, are still there. The doctor then carries Aya out of the house. A year later, Mura pushes a wheelchair along the streets of their village after a mass. The woman in the wheelchair is Aya, who still hasn't regained her consciousness since the incident. Though alive, Aya appears to be senseless. Despite finding a way to save Mura, she ended up getting stuck in the subconscious world. Regardless of their situation, Mura promises Aya that she will always be there, and that she will be waiting for her to come back. Hopeful, Mura keeps praying to God for the chance to live with her sister, just like before. The scene then shifts, as Father Herman walks into an unknown building, where numerous bodies covered with white cloth are lined up perfectly on the floor. He walks past them before kneeling. He then begins the ritual to meet the souls of his prisoners inside his world. In the end, Aya managed to help her sister, though she lost her own soul in return. To this day, no one really stopped Father Herman from praying on the innocent to start his own world inside the subconscious spiritual world.